Humans and other animals sense light, not with their nose or ears or the sense of touch in their fingers, but with their eyes. Open an eye, and light seems to fly into it, coming from as far away as the sun, or even further, and arriving in an instant. There are several complex components to this process of sight. There is light itself, whatever it might be, and whatever light is, we seldom see it only as a bright glare. Instead, the instant we open our eyes, we see shapes, colors, and textures organized into images. What is light? But also, by what means does light enter the eye and form images there? Finally, many or all of these images instantly mean something to us. That's my bike. That's Dad's teddy bear. Somebody dropped a cell phone. What is light? How does it form images? Finally, how do we come to recognize and understand the images which form in our eyes? A stove element is one of the very few objects in our everyday life that actually glows or emits light that can travel directly to our eyes. The most familiar and spectacular is the sun itself. And substituting for the sun indoors, a light bulb filament is another of those rare objects that emit light. Geometric optics would be of little use to us if all it described was the straight line path from one of these rare light sources directly to an eye. That's because nearly all the light that we see that makes up the images that form in our eyes, the light that largely provides our sense of sight, comes not directly to our eyes, but indirectly. Light rays bounce off or are reflected from objects which do not themselves emit light. In fact, the foundation of geometric optics was laid some 2,000 years ago by the Greek mathematician Euclid, who described the geometry of light rays which strike objects and reflect away from them. An incident ray is a light ray arriving at an object. A reflected ray is the ray which bounces off the object and which may eventually reach someone's eye. Drawn on a sheet of paper, such as the page of a textbook, the incident ray and the reflected ray are constrained to the same two-dimensional plane, the plane of the paper. In three-dimensional real life, when an incident ray of light strikes an object, there are many possible two-dimensional planes in which a reflected ray might leave that object. At the point where the incident ray strikes the surface, if a straight line is drawn perpendicular or normal to the surface, then both the normal line and the incident ray together lie in only one plane. The reflected ray will also lie in this plane. The incident ray forms an angle with this normal line, called the angle of incidence. The reflected ray likewise forms an angle with the normal. It's called the angle of reflection. When a light ray strikes the surface, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. That was Euclid's most profound contribution to the study of light rays. This concept is known as the law of reflection. The law of reflection states that when a light ray strikes a surface, the angle of incidence will always equal the angle of reflection. And that is an important foundation of geometric optics.